I used to track all my expenses on a budgeting spreadsheet and that was until I started using AI budgeting apps and I realized that I can actually save so much money by using these different apps and that is exactly why I have been using Plum over the past three months and testing is it actually a good app and should you be using it? Well in this video I'm going to show you exactly what Plum is like, I'm going to give you an honest review and I'm going to give you a full tutorial. So in this video I'm going to be breaking down what exactly Plum is, I'm going to give a full tutorial of the app and how you can use it including the key features which by the way there's one key feature in here which has saved me a couple hundreds of pounds already then I'm going to go through the pros and cons and suggest whether you should be using this app or not so without further ado what exactly is Plum well Plum is an AI budgeting tool which allows you to manage your money in a really efficient way by using lots of different money features such as roundups AI savings brain, automatic recurring payments going from one bank account to another. Not only does it do that, but it also has an investment side as well, so you can actually trade and invest stocks. And one of the things which I actually really like is the fact it's actually got like an AI chatbot attached to the side and it actually helps you try and save money. But that's exactly what Plum is in a nutshell. Now I could give you some really, really complicated definition, but I'm not gonna give you it here. I'm just gonna tell you exactly how it is. But probably the bit that you really wanna know is how do you use it? Is it actually good? How do you set everything up? How do you link your bank accounts? Well, let's go through a full overview of the app and a full tutorial now. So straight away, you click into the app and you set up your face ID. And the first thing that you are prompted to do when it comes to any of these budgeting apps is just linking all your bank accounts into the actual platform. So if I scroll down to the bottom and click accounts, you can actually see I've got four separate accounts linked. I've got one savers, one debit card and then two further debit cards after that. And I mean, it's super easy to link these accounts as well and you can click into them and you can see that this is linked for a further 40 days and it's weird because you have to renew it every single 90 day period and it's telling me I've got 40 days left here. But honestly, syncing your banks is super easy and you shouldn't be stressed about that at all. Certainly when it comes to Plum, I've used so many other apps as well such as Emma and YNAB and I found those perfectly fine as well. But the first thing you're presented with is this home screen and you can see it kind of tells you how much money you've got sat in your Plum accounts, you've got the brain and then you've got activity. So I'll walk through each of these so you actually understand what it means because I'm not going to lie, some of these things can actually be so confusing. So first of all you can see your Plum total and you can click into this and it just says the total amount that you've got sat in your Plum account. You can then scroll down a little bit further and you can see it says pockets on the left hand side and this takes you into all your separate savings accounts which I'll get onto a little bit later on. Then as I scroll down you've got the brain and that the brain is where you can set up all the key features to be able to maximize all your savings. But once again I'll get into that bit shortly. Next you've got all your activities. So what, have, what transactions have happened in your bank account over the past 30 days. And when I say bank account, I'm talking about from your bank account into your Plum account. So you can see here I've had a few automatic transfers, some manual deposits as well. And then you scroll down, it talks about all the perks which you've got as part of Plum. So you've got your monthly cinema tickets, you've got your taste card, and you've got your other Cafe Nero. But this is actually so good because Emma and YNAB and even Monzo don't have any of these cashback offers. So one thing to really look out for, and that's one thing I actually really like. Now, let's move on to something a bit more interesting, the pockets. Now, the pockets is how you essentially save all your money, so it gives you all the suggested savings accounts which you can open. So straight away, you can see I've got a primary pocket which doesn't actually make me any money in terms of interest, but it's just my money going from my bank account into here. I then also got a pocket down here called my rainy day fund, which I'll automatically make deposits into the rainy day fund just in case if anything happens to my car, for example, or if there's anything that happens to my flat, I just have that money sat aside. It's like an emergency fund, basically. And if you don't know what an emergency fund is, check out this card here because I did a whole video on an emergency fund. But it's really nice because you can also create new pockets. So you can have one if you're a future investor, winter fuel fund, treat yourself, buy by overdraft. All of these are quite cool. You can even start one from scratch. So if you had a goal of, let's say 1,500 to save, and let's give it a color. Let's also give it a name. Let's say you're wanting to buy a car. And that's, yes, 1,500 pounds is a very cheap car. Here you can set your 3.3% interest rate. If you're on the boost or the max, get a higher interest rate. And you can essentially set up your pocket that way. On top of that, you have like a cash ISA, a lifetime ISA, 
I've got set up with a cash ISA because it's quite a good interest rate and it pays quite frequently too. Now you can actually see here the brain and this is like the key feature of Plum. So if you're going to listen to anything that I say today, listen to this one thing. So essentially what it is, is it's the different methods that you can use to be able to save your money. So it's the way the AI engine's working to be able to save more money into your account. And I've got a few things set up. So I've got Roundup. So every time I spend, let's say I spent £2.80 in the shop, I'm going to have 20 pence allocated into one of my accounts and that 20 pence is going to accumulate with interest that's what a roundup is and i do this with my chase account and i managed to accumulate 140 pounds in roundups which is a bit insane over a three month period anyway you've got things such as payday so as soon as you hit your payday which is on the 20th of the month for me you've got 150 pounds which will automatically deposit from your account without you even having to worry you've got a weekly deposit and you've got all these other cool things so this one pence challenge which you have to be on the plus account for but it essentially puts one pence away every single day in the year but that one pence doubles each day so it start off as one pence then it'll be two then it'll be four then it'll be eight then it'll be 16 and then it'll be 32, let's hope my maths is right here, and it will continue going throughout the year so you'll save lots of money, which is quite cool. Now, on top of that, you have your invest. Now, I don't really use this because I don't think it's that good in terms of the fees. Trading two on two is by far so much better with the fees. You also have a spend. So this is the whole expense tracker. And what it essentially does is it shows you how much money you've spent over a period and it puts it into categories. So you can see your pie chart here, you've got transfers in general and these are the two categories that it puts into. And in general, you can see here, I've got money going across to different accounts and transfers, I've also got monies going into my other accounts as well. And you can flick back to June as well, just to compare. Now, this is 100% wrong. I don't know why it's coming up with 65,000 pounds in total spending, because I don't have 65,000 pounds. I mean, I would love to have 65,000 pounds. If anyone wants to deposit any money into my account, you know the details. But yes, that is completely wrong. And then finally, you've got the AI assistant at the end where you can say things like, how to use plum, question mark. And then it will come back with a response. Here we go, how to use plum. It's gone through like, I can use an automated savings. I can explore the products. Let's say, let's tell me more about the pockets I can use as a self-employed person. So this is the first time I'm actually trying this, so let's hope it comes up with something good. So this is all on you, Plum, right now. And it has, it's told me about all the different pockets. But that's a quick tutorial on what Plum is. Now, what's good about it, what's bad about it? Well, I'm gonna pass on to past Jake, who I filmed this the other day, on what's actually good about Plum. So straight off the bat, there's one thing which Plum does that Emma and YNAB just do not do at all, and it is the savings management, and this has gotta be the number one pro of using Plum. Their savings management part is absolutely amazing. It's got its own dedicated savings page, and you've got different pots that you can put your money into, whether this is a future investor one, whether this is a rainy day pot. It also gives you lots of other different suggestions on the different pots that you can open. And then it's got the different accounts which you can open with different interest rates as well. So the best you can get in a standard plum account is 4.58%. But if you look at Emma, for example, it's only 3.95. So straight away, Plum has got that for me. It's definitely winning on its whole saving part of the app. However, there's one thing which is just dreadful in Plum, and it's one of the reasons why I actually don't use Plum at all, and it's why I use YNAB and Emma instead, and it's got to be the analytics page. Now, just looking at it, it is so boring, and it's literally not telling me anything useful. There's literally no point in having this expense tracker in the app because it's that pointless. I mean, Yes, it breaks down your expenditure, but it's only breaking it down into two separate categories for me, transfers and general. So it's really not very useful at all. Whereas if I look back and look at Emma, it is so, so much better. Now, you can upgrade this and you get a much better expense tracker. But once again, you're having to spend money 
to save money and it just doesn't sit right with me and that is why i really do dislike plum and it's not good from the expense tracker perspective but anyway should you actually be using the app well let's go on to future jacob and he'll explain to you why you should or shouldn't so finally should you be using plum certainly over all the other ones such as emma monzo y and a b well I think Plum is perfect for beginners. I think it's perfect for teens and couples because you can link accounts into Plum as well. It's good because it's just super simple to use. So if you're looking for something really simple, then use Plum. But if you're looking for something a bit more complex, a little bit better with an expense tracker and isn't anywhere near as expensive considering the max package is £11.99 a month. And this still frustrates me today. Why are you charging money for a money management or an expense management app? Founders, I'm talking to you, please stop charging money. Think of a different way of earning money. I'm sure you can. But that's who I'd recommend this app to. Now, if you are using an Excel spreadsheet at the moment, I'll definitely recommend switching over to this simply because it will track all of your expenses from all your different accounts. But if you want to see other apps such as Emma and YNAB, check out my video. And if you want to see me comparing all of the three together, then check out this video up here.